Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Area 312 Rock and Metal Vodcast. I'm one of your hosts, Kent, along with my co-host, Rex. Friends, today we have we have a wonderful band that I'm I love their music, but I gotta tell you, uh, I am kind of in a in a state of biblical mourning. And as you know, biblical mourning, it requires putting on sackcloth and ashes, and I'm fresh out of sackcloth. The reason why I'm in a state of mourning. Uh, is because when I think of bands such as Paradox and Soldier, Armada, Cross Force, and this great band, Chosen Stranger, it boggles the mind and I'm perplexed how bands of this caliber that deliver the great quality music back in the day with lyrics full of steps and substance, they fail to garner mass distribution or a big label to get behind them and support them. It, it boggles the mind to this day. However, that has no bearing on their creative output and the quality material that they gave to us. And I'm so thankful for our friends at Rocks Records, who just last year compiled their material, put it all together, and it sounds better than ever. Friends, I'm talking about the band Chosen Stranger, and we welcome today from Chosen Stranger, lead guitarist Rusty Ellison and drummer Jeff Ellison. Welcome, guys. Glad to have you. How are you guys doing? We love you. Good. We yeah. love you. We love you. Guys. It's great to have you all on, and I'm so thankful and so glad, I guess I should say, no pun intended. <laughs> Speaking of that song, Jeff and Rusty, most of us, back in the 80s, in 1988, I first came across you guys from a, a cassette that I had called Underground Metal. It was a wonderful compilation, and it served a great purpose for people like Rex and I, you know, the Christian rock and metal, uh, those of us who who had ears to hear, as they say, um, that's how a lot of us discovered great new bands uh, that were uh, playing great music with that wonderful message. And that's all I've ever known about Chosen Stranger for years until just recently when this came back out and it caused Rex and I to investigate. We're <laughs> glad to have you here, guys, and, and it's a blessing. And Just want to ask you some questions about, we want to take that journey with Chosen Stranger and we, we got to start at square one. So Jeff and Rusty, may I ask, um, what, was there music in your home growing up? Did, was there, uh, you know, radio blaring in the home or, or, or any family members performing music? Well, the day My mother was a musician and uh, she was a really good country guitarist. And um, she taught me chords. Uh, I, 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 I was in, in to the guitar at like six, seven years old when we heard the back in the sixties when we heard the Beatles and Jeff was always in the drums. So my mom got the ball rolling and taught me some chords and, and um, I took it from there. And of course I liked rock better. So uh, later on, you know, we, we graduate, you know, gradually started getting better on our instruments and uh, started writing music together. Kind of weird because we knew my mom could play. We didn't care nothing about that until we seen the Beatles. And then he went, <laughs> mom plays guitar. You know, everybody <laughs> loved the Beatles. You know, you, oh, yeah. Got, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I love she the Beatles. Could, she could figure those that stuff out. It fascinated us. At one time, she broke down a Zeppelin solo to teach it to Rusty, and it sounded country, but it was the right notes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, well guys, was, let me ask you. So, you're go ahead, Russ. I was going to say my mom was a good guitar player. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, so, so I I can only imagine then that that your mom was a very instrumental uh, person in your life with music. Regarding your respective instruments, now, Russ, maybe your mom was your uh, influence for the guitar, but for your respective instruments, because, Jeff, you play the drums, who influenced you for your respective instrument? I'm trying to think of what the first time that I that I decided I liked the drums. I, I, at first, I only liked the music, and then I wound up staring at the drums Oh, there was a drum set in the music room. 
And when I sat behind him, there was no one in there but me. When I sat behind him and messed with him a little bit, somebody behind me said, that sounds good. <laughs> and that, yeah. I, the life we were living, there wasn't much good in it, but that encouraged me enough. And then I took one lesson. It, it made me interested. So in fourth grade, I took one lesson and the guy said, watch him, kept pointing at me. So that made me feel it. After that, I loved him. I, I pursued him, trying to find a set and place to work out and all that stuff. I loved the kit, man. I just fell in love with the instrument itself. So. It was it was music. Music in general, uh, starting with the Beatles, uh, it just I just knew uh, that's what I, I had to do when I when I heard the Beatles. Something about music just moved me. Yeah, you know. So it's like, well, I know I'm going to be a, a guitar player. You know, uh, you know, someday. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. You know, I music. I, I think it's a very spiritual thing. Yeah, uh, you know, it's something, and we were created to give to have relationship and fellowship uh, with our Father, and I think it's it's something He's instilled some type of music in all of us. You know, yeah. for for worship and fellowship with Him, and um, I totally get it. Um, I want to ask you guys. I know. With regard to you guys learning your respective instrument and everything, and your mom, I'm sure being so supportive of that, with her being a musician, um, you guys I know were in bands together as teenagers. Did you practice a lot in the house together? And then did you have angry neighbors <laughs> as you practiced? We was in the projects and we had we had a time limit. We we'd get a few, few licks in. We had like four or five minutes till security got out there and they'd shut us down. So if you finally could get some gear, you try to use it, then the security come and shut you down. It, it, I don't know how we developed in the middle of all that. Somehow we did. I don't, I don't know how. Well, believe me, we drove our neighbors nuts. Yeah, uh, you know. And back then, you know, for rock guitar, um, it's progressed a lot now. I've always liked Marshall, uh, but um, you had to use this little muff fuzz tone thing to, to even get the sound that you wanted, but uh, you're, it had to be turned up loud to get that sound on guitar. And boy, it didn't go well with with others, you know, when you're trying to practice your guitar. <laughs> yeah, and then Jeff on the drums, you know, try to try to be a drummer and not bother somebody. So you know, what I do, man. I I take the headphones jack and plug rusty's amp into it put a zeppelin thing on and i get maybe two and a half songs before they got there <laughs> and they go, i have to come back here You're gonna, you know baby. yeah you know that's one thing you know <laughs> that, that does make you better and, I, and we start kind of start off like this is playing along with records with yeah. with people that we like you know um jeff would plug them uh is into my amp absolutely so he could get loud enough to play along with drums and i would play along with, with the record until it sounded like them, you know, because you think you got something, and then and then you 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 play along with it, and it's like, well, I ain't even close. You know? <laughs> it's so, you know, that, it's a that, wonderful that, chosen strength. Go ahead, Russ. I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say that that kind of got us to where uh, it was more. It seemed more professional because the people that the artists that we looked up to, we were playing right along with, and and if. Uh, if we were playing along with the record and we didn't, and it didn't sound like that, we then we would stop and go, okay, something's wrong. So we kind of perfected ourselves as we went along. Sure. Well, it's it's a wonder that you guys, that chosen stranger, didn't wind up being a speed metal band for you guys trying to hurry up and play before the police got there. You know, make it fast, guys. Make it snappy. So, you well, know, guys, you know, let me ask you. I, I was going to say, uh, Death Walker is probably the heaviest song we wrote. Yeah, the song, and yeah. that was the name of that EP. Uh, yes, we did. We did three different EPs. Um, Death Walker uh, had a, it was pretty heavy metal mm -hmm. uh, because that's what we liked, mm -hmm. and then the other one uh, was more poppy stuff that we'd recorded before that back in the eighties when we started Chosen Stranger because you had the Madonna scene and all that going on and all that, and you had to go a little bit more poppier to even get a gig. Sure. You know, then the metal, but then the metal came in 
not long after that, we went right back to our roots and we recorded the Death Walker EP. That each 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 one of them had four songs on, because you know that's a lot of money to do that. That's all we could afford. Sure. Well, and it's and it's all good, and we're going to get to each of those phases here in just a little bit. But I still want to stick right now the early beginnings of you guys musically. I know that you were in bands or a band. My question is, guys, whether bands plural or a band. Um, what style were you playing prior to Chosen Stranger? I'm going to guess it was metal. And then what were some of your band names if you had different bands? <laughs> well, we, we wasn't really a metal band. I mean, I don't think uh, uh, we 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 loved Zeppelin, and uh, actually, Kiss was one of our favorite bands. <laughs> you know, just because when they came out, it was I mean, we just they were like our gods. Kiss, yeah. Aerosmith. Um, we really wasn't into the. I don't consider them like metal, but maybe some people do. Back in the day, yeah, I mean, go ahead, guys. Well, I was just going to say, we were really more of a power pop or a hard rock band. I would just say, if you come thinking metal and we're getting ready to thrash you, you'll be disappointed. You know, we you got know, hooky songs. You know, our it. style was, was, was heavy guitar with good harmonies. Sure. On, on vocals. I think music has changed over the years. There's been a shift. I think way back in the day, bands such as Kiss um, were kind of considered metal. And, and maybe Aerosmith a little bit less, but still in that realm. But, you know, things have shifted as music's gotten harder. And what we once considered maybe metal, it's now relegated to something else, you know. But, um, guys, let me ask you this. Your relationship with Christ, when did your relate, respective relationship with Christ begin? It was two different eras. I tattooed mine on my, on my forearm there. Is it 1980? That's Jeff, when I came to him. Jeff accepted Christ first. We were doing clubs. All of a sudden, he came to me, accepted Christ, and said, I ain't playing in bars no more. You know, we're, we're, I want to do Christian now. And, and I fought it at first. But then, you know, my mom had been praying for us for years. And so because, you know, I, I wasn't going to go play with anybody else, I started going to church. And uh, I ended up accepting Christ, too. So that that right there was like, okay, we're Christians now. We need to find a bass player and start doing Christian music. So we did. Yeah, did. because I came to Jesus first. And the scripture that says, if you're not willing to leave mother, brother, sister, for my sake, you're not worthy of me. And me and Rusty were tight the whole time growing up and always played together. And he wanted to continue the clubs. And I was now a Christian. So at certain points, I had to just stand alone and let him try to find a different drummer and go without me. But instead, he wound up coming with me eventually. But that was a, that was tough there. Where, as a young Christian, so I said, "Well, your best friend, your bandmate, who's more important?" <laughs> but I was getting the tug to not go back in, just do club tunes and you know, three in the morning sure. and get everybody rocking. And all that. I felt it the pull to use it. And you know, we had a best friend at the time that we grew up since childhood, um, and uh, he wouldn't go with us. I mean, he wanted nothing to do with God. And so that left us with just back to a, a guitar player and a drummer, and we needed somebody to finish the band. And, and we start when we started going to church, this this other guy Dan Grover, uh, who played on quite a few of those songs, mm -hmm. uh, most of them actually, except for Death Walker, was the bass player was Dan Grover. We met him at church, and uh, he kind of took us under his wing, and. Um, so then we had a bass player again, with, with and Jeff was the lead singer, and I did the backup vocals up until we found a way better singer, and uh, it took us to a new level. The stuff like uh, everything you're hearing on there is Russ Atterbury. Um, mm -hmm. So and he's not in the band anymore. Me and Jeff doing right. all the vocals now. You know, it's we're older now, and those vocals were high. This guy mm -hmm. can sing 
like anything. You you hear how good a singer he he was. Sure, Russ he was is pretty, great. He sure is. Okay. But um, but a lot, a lot of players today, you know, the older people, you know, even the artists out there are tuning down. Mm -hmm. So we found that tuning a step down, we're able to sing the stuff Russ Atterbury sang. We couldn't sing it in standard tune, but me and Jeff are sharing the vocals back and forth, and we're pulling it off the stuff that Russ was singing. And uh, but we're getting ready to write some new stuff, so it's not going to sure. matter. <laughs> Guys, I want to ask really quick, whenever you started going to church and, you know, you guys kind of came from the, the club scene, were they, I'm just curious, were they accepting of the style of music? Were you guys nurtured in the church or did you get some blowback because you came from the club scene? <laughs> well, it, uh, they kind of didn't know what the heck to do with this. We was the only long haired rock people that ever probably walked in their doors. And it was a pretty established church with very traditional uh People go there, and the preacher was a one-eyed Marine Turner Burn kind of old school guy. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't really know what he what he was thinking of us because we kept coming. And then we did an outreach there on a flatbed down where the kids used to do the cruise every weekend. Got a big crowd and preached preached the glory down and stuff. We were sitting in church, and the the main pastor I'm talking about, he says, "I heard a lot of you people talking about these long hair kids up." We was going, oh no. He no. kind of lit into us and he goes, These kids have done more for Jesus than most of you sit here all your life. <laughs> you know, you know what's what, what's crazy about that when you see you know, how do they accept you and all that? Uh there was a there was a side of the church where, where we started going to that was like a youth part. It was uh it was called the Oasis. And um I mean they they didn't know what to think of us, but they knew that we accepted Christ and we were different from them, but we're pretty good players, you know? So they were pretty impressed by that. And there were a couple of, uh, uh, bass players and, uh, and singers that we, we would like use just so we could play, play. And, uh, we did quite a few things over on the youth side, um, until we just finally got all the people that we were going to find for chosen stranger. And then we started gigging. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's wonderful. I'm glad that, you know, the sometimes it takes a little bit, you know, but I'm glad the pastor, the Lord opened his eyes and, you know, that's, that's wonderful. So guys yeah. from the time of, of, you know, so you guys were playing in clubs and then, you know, the Lord knocked on your heart's door and, and one by one you received them. When did chosen stranger officially assemble as a band? How did all that come to fruition where you guys were act, were officially chosen stranger? Well, um, as soon as we started going to church and we weren't playing bars anymore, it was like, okay, well, uh, I mean, we had written some stuff, but we weren't an original band yet. So it was like, well, we're going to have to write, you know, we're going to have to come up with an original. We wanted to be artists anyway. That's what we wanted to do for a living. That was our goal. But we were doing cover tunes, you know, in the bars. But we knew we could write, so we found a bass player, started writing, started writing, um, and um, then we went in the recording studio uh, and started uh, recording our own music. So that's how that all started out. The song that uh, you mentioned earlier, So Glad, the funny thing is, is that song and Lonely World and The Light were all done in a little studio in Springfield, Illinois, where we live. Wasn't even very nice. Uh, and then the other ones were done in professional studios where it cost more money. One was done in Memphis. The other one was done up in Chicago, up by where Rex Carroll lived, of, of White Cross. But anyway, uh, yeah, th that's th that's how it all came about. It's about 1984 or so, right around in there.
I'm curious about the name. How did you come up with the name of the band? I'm really interested in that. Well, I can tell you that right off the bat. Okay. It's uh, First Peter, I think it is. Now, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be embarrassed because, I mean, I, I don't know scriptures. Uh, right. I, I know scripture, but the exact one. Yeah. The scripture that says we, we are uh, we are God's chosen people, and then it says we are to live as strangers among everyone else. And, you know, in other words, not be like them. Mm-hmm. So we put it together, chosen stranger. We got the, we got the name from the Bible. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool and unique. Yeah. Hey, I like the Striper shirt. Yeah. Hey, Striper thank was, you. Thank you. Thank Striper you. Was big, Striper was a big influence on us. You know, mm-hmm. they came on the scene when the heavy metals uh, 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 came in and, you know, they turned some heads, you know, they, they couldn't really say these Christian guys, you know, because they were blowing everybody off the stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We well, definitely looked up to them and seen that it was possible, but they were a big influence of, Hey, they can do what we can do. Yeah. So did you ever see them in concert? Like back in the day, guys, did you ever yeah. attend? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we saw them with uh, white lion. Do you know who that is? Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, White Lion opened for them, and uh, it was at one of the biggest places we have here in Springfield to play, called the Convention Center. I mean, it's huge. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was unbelievable. That Michael Sweet's got a voice. Yeah. Yes, yep. he sure does. You know what's funny? Yeah. We got a, a one song on YouTube, and Michael Sweet texted us and said that song rocked because it's got one of the Michael Sweet screams at the end. Oh, <laughs> we recorded another four-song EP. That was the music was done in the church, and then this sound guy that we knew, who's the best around, took we uh, we, we went to his basement to record the vocals. Anyway, what I'm getting to is uh, we recorded a four song EP that you you haven't heard any of this stuff. You can find it on YouTube, but it's not on the record. And oh. there's a song on there called "No One Loves You Like Like I Do," uh, and Michael Sweet heard it on YouTube and actually made a comment said this song rocks. And I went and checked; it was him. People like uh uh, Michael Sweet and um, uh, you know the the, uh, the artists that we knew once we became a Christian that played all kinds of music like White Cross, Baron Cross. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Blood Good. Uh, we we opened for all those bands. Once we started going and we got the new singer Russ was singing. I mean, we got the opportunity to open for for all these bands, and only because we had recorded music. They heard it and was like, yeah, you guys can open, you know, we weren't signed, but they let us open for them. So I guess speaking of that, Russ, that probably really encouraged you that you've got, you know, these well-known bands in the rock, you know, metal Christian community allowing you to open up that that had to be very encouraging to you guys. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we considered them the professionals and it was like, wow, they they actually like us, you know, so <laughs> yeah, very encouraging, you know, mm-hmm. we didn't want, we didn't want to have big heads or anything. We didn't really know, know how good we were as for, you know, mm-hmm. us, like well, we're great or anything. We never really was like that. We just love music and we would write stuff and we were hoping that other people liked it. Mm-hmm. And evidently they did because they heard it was like, wow, this stuff is good. You guys could open, you know, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Michael Bloodgood, very nice guy. Uh, I forget the guy's name in Baron Cross, uh, but they were the, all these guys were really nice. You know, this back in the long hair days, we had big old hair, you know, and everything. Uh, you know, speaking of that church that we went to, they still have pictures of this day in the album cover, the, the big hair days, and they use us for that, even mm. though they didn't know what to do with us. Uh, they knew that uh, they weren't like us and that we were wild, but we accepted Christ. So, you know, they honored that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got to know us eventually. <laughs> we grew up on the street you know most people in churches didn't not, not where we went it, you know i looked at it like you know you have to have a little shirt and tie and, and be, be a little dork you know to, to be a christian and it's like well how am i going to fit into that you know because I mean, we grew up like i said with kiss so on that note 
I'm going to say something in my whole life. I've heard, you know, I grew up a headbanger. I don't relate to suits and ties. <laughs> did you watch the headbangers ball? I did. But what I want to <laughs> say, guys, is this. What I want to say to our viewers out there is this. Friends, my whole life I've heard if you dress this way with your torn jeans and your T-shirts and yada, yada, your hair, I know I don't have it anymore. I had banged so hard it all fell out back in the day. But <laughs> they always used to tell me, you know, you look like the world. Well, yeah. what about the lawyers who defend those who are guilty? What about the politicians who are doing things that are wrong and bad? What about the... Uh, televangelists who are robbing people from their money that all wear these three-piece suits and ties. Exactly. Who looks like the world now? Yeah. What does the world look like? Was Satan not an angel of light that was beautiful? Yeah. I'm just going to leave it right there. Rex Carroll of White Cross. Guys, I knew that you all had a relationship with Rex. He kind of he kind of took note of you guys and and you know uh tell me about your relationship with Rex Carroll and, and what all went down there, you know, what all went on with Rex trying to support you guys. Well, Jeff was trying to get us signed and he was pretty good at poking his nose out there and uh and getting and talking to people. And somehow, I'll let him tell the story, but he came to know Rex, and Rex was uh, going to sign us, going to get us signed to a label. Contracts were on the table, but we split up right after that. But just to make a long story short, but, and then Rex Carroll actually, uh, White Cross actually came to our city in Springfield, Illinois, and we opened for them here. And, um, and we went to Rex Carroll's house before, and uh, yeah, I mean, we personally knew him, but I'll let Jeff tell the rest. Go ahead and ask him about it because he knows a little bit more personally about it. I nosed around with Rex just because of, he was close. He was in Illinois like us, and I didn't know where Zion was. It's Chicago, but it's like a suburb, so mm -hmm. I don't remember how I found his his name or something. But I called him, and he said, "You know, send me your stuff." And then he called back pretty quickly and said, "Now, who are you?" I guess he really liked it, and he took us over there and showed us perfection that he uses when he even pre-records stuff. And then took us over to the label in the studio, and um, the guy was saying, look, we can go 40000 uh, If more is needed, that'll be up to Rex. I mean, it, and Rex's first budget was 2500 He had got us in with the big dogs because he wasn't – he'd moved up in the world a bit. And before we signed our singer, I'm glad it happened that way because uh, we would have signed and then wouldn't have had the singer. And everything just started dissolving. And we, we had, but that's how I met him. And that's how we got involved with him. He was just in Illinois and seemed close to me. But man, he turned me on to how to be a tracking agent, who's the tracking stations. He opened up a lot of stuff so that I could Zoom and try to help us. And that's why uh, I learned how to track and all that stuff about getting signed and everything. Here, years have passed now. We didn't know if we'd ever play again. And I think now he's going to finish the work he started in, in, in me and Jeff. I really do. We found a bass player who's really cool. And uh, me and Jeff didn't really want to sing again. When matter of fact, we're, we're hoping to find another singer like Russ, but you know, don't know if we ever will, but instead of not playing, we're just going to do the vocals for now. And we're going to record some new music because me and Jeff write it anyway. And um, we're going to see what God's going to do with us. We, with that logo that's on that record, we just had that made as soon as Rock's records uh, got a hold of us because the other one was, pretty outdated it kind of looked cartoonish right and, uh, so i actually got the idea for that for that logo from a blade movie those that lettering uh mm -hmm. i saw it on there and i took it to a place and said here write this and did chosen stranger if you'll notice well th that lettering is i forget what you call it but he found it the people at this printing company 
designed the logo for me exactly like I told him to. And we sent it to Rocks Records and they put it for our album cover. Yeah. Very, very cool. Guys, I also want to ask you, aside from uh, Rex Carroll, I noticed that Tommy Cathy and Greg Marl from uh, DeGarmo and Key, uh, they did some work with you guys also, I think on your 89 EP. Tell us about working with Tommy Cathy and Greg Marl. How did you get involved with them? <laughs> Oh, there was one other Christian band, the only one I've ever heard of even since from our area. And they went down and they met them somehow and said, because they were a Christian band, that they would track four songs and go home. And then the then Greg and Tommy would mix it on their own time and they'd have an EP and get a Christian band going, you know, for low money. So I heard about that. And I that's how I called and said, hey, we're an up and coming Christian band and you did this for so and so. Would you be interested in doing that? And that's how we worked out a deal with them guys. Uh, went up in Memphis to record that. And they were the two coolest guys you'll ever meet, man. <laughs> you know, we, we opened at, at a huge festival, outdoor festival around the Illinois area here uh, called Agape. Mm -hmm. And um, DeGarmo and Key played there. And mm -hmm. we we was the first band that opened. We was the only band, again, that wasn't signed, but got the gig because people liked our stuff. And we did have professional recordings. But... Come, Jeff got to know the bass player and the drummer, which is Tommy Cathy and uh, and Greg Morrow, and they happen to have their own studio in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. So they said, "We'll give you a set price. Come down here, and we'll 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 record four songs for you, and um, uh, we'll do it all for one price." And that was "He Won't Hurt You," "Want to Be Like You," "Living It Up," and "Guilty to the Crime of Love." Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, uh, Tommy Cathy actually sang on some of that stuff and yeah. played some keyboards. Yeah, it was fun. Cool. You all had two seven-inch singles from 86. 88 brought So Glad, which was on the Underground Metal compilation. Uh, we had the 89 EP. Now, that had more, I'm just going to call it pop metal. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense because, you know, I, I have such a gamut. <laughs> I run the gamut of what I like, but I love that stuff. It sounds great. And friends out there, their, their 89 EP, Chosen Stranger, to me... It sounds like Under Lock and Key era Dawkin, plus maybe the very best that Poison could ever put out, except for Chosen Stranger has more heft to it, you know. Um, I would also attribute it, guys, if y'all know who Rage of Angels are, it's all in that wheelhouse or TNT. It's that wonderful pop metal that, that rocks, but it has such a great sense of melody to it. And then we get yeah. to 92's Death Walker um the the ep which is a little bit harder but you know jeff and rusty all of this and kudos uh and rex and i appreciate our each and every vendor that we uh purchase from there's three main ones and we love them all i just want to thank rocks records for being astute enough to pick this stuff up yeah. and this whole album encompasses all of your material from that era but it all sounds like one cohesive package it's really great. Yeah, so, I mean, um, I mean, you can you can tell it's the same band, but um, I was wondering if you noticed that that because you know those were different areas. We went in the studio several different times, and uh, the ones in the '80s were geared more towards poppier stuff because that's what was in, and you had to write something. It's like, well, you know, they're not going for this metal stuff. We're gonna have to write something different. And then by the '90s. The, the heavier rock came back in and we went back to our roots and did the death walker cd and that's what we like the best you know when when the when rocks records said they uh the ones that were going over better he said were actually the stuff we did in the 80s it was mm -hmm. like really you know the wanna be like you you know it, it's to me that was kind of cheesy i didn't know if i'd ever even play that song again you know but uh, it does have good melodies and stuff to it, and they have something about them where after you listen to the song, you can remember the hook. 
Mm-hmm. Well, on all of them, we actually redid those songs, and we're going to play them live. Awesome. Every single, almost every song on that record, we're going to play live. Awesome. And me, me and Jeff are able to sing it because we tuned a step down, even without Russ, because we wrote it anyway. Who would know it better, right? Right. I think it's wonderful, and whereas Death Walker might have a bit more uh, beef to it, yeah. The earlier stuff from '89. There's something be something to be said, guys, about that sweet confection. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm serious. It's all good. Don't lose the. I mean, you know, uh, guilty to the crime of love. I mean, I I think I sent this to Jeff in a uh, in an email, but I said, Jeff, I'm a sucker for a great cowbell. And you all have a couple of songs that have some killer cowbell. I, I mean it. I love it. You know, that's that's the good stuff. This encompasses roughly seven years of material from 86 through 92. So yeah. when did Chosen Stranger back then officially call it a day during, we'll say the classic years, the early years, uh, you know, 92 being the cutoff here with Death Walker. When did you guys officially call it a day back then? Around 2000. Okay. And like I said, there's, we have another EP you haven't heard, but you can hear it on YouTube um, with uh, those four songs. We always did four song EPs. This one has, it's all me and Jeff singing. There wasn't as many guitar tracks and stuff on there because we didn't have a lot of money, but we knew we had to keep going. So around 2000, we recorded uh, it, a, a song called In His Arms, No One Loves You Like I Do, the one that Michael Sweet really liked. Um, a song called Written in Blood, which is about uh, your name being written in, in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, there's another one called Believe in Me. And believe it or not, my brother, I had backslid, backslid for a while, and my brother wrote those lyrics about me and about my life. How I once had it, had everything, and then I lost everything, and then God brought me back, which is where we're at now, you know. We're a lot closer to God spiritually, of course, than we were back then. So we're pretty excited about what God's going to do this time because we haven't played in years. We didn't know if we were going to. Rocks Records does this for us. It triggered us to get the band back together. And uh, we have a 16-song set that we're going to do for a live show. And we've already got 14 songs down with this new bass player. We only got a... We only got to learn two more to show this bass player two more. This is songs that we've already had written. And then, of course, we're, getting, we're going to write some new stuff, and we're going to add that to it. But uh, we're really uh, excited to see where God's going to take this. Yeah. Now, Guys, um, you, go ahead, um, Russ. Russ. I, I got a question. You really got my curiosity, Russ, peaked about these four songs, the last demos that you did that haven't been released. Do you think that ever in the future they'll get released, you know, somehow or not, and not just be on YouTube? Or can't you say? <laughs> you mean the ones we recorded in 2000 after yes. Russ? Was- yes. Well, I'd love to re record those. I mean, the, okay. The, 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 have you heard any of them? No, not not those four that you're mentioning. No. Okay. Yeah. Check them out. Yeah, I mean, if you go on YouTube uh, under Chosen Stranger, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I could give you the song titles and you could go hear what I'm talking about. Okay. They, they don't have very many guitar tracks on them. It's pretty okay. bare. Okay. But, um, 
they're good enough to re-record. Yeah, and and with a better production, put more guitar stuff on sure. them. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And oh yeah, they're they're good enough songs. We're, okay. we're actually doing every one of them. Live. Okay. 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 So maybe there's you know a possibility sometime in the future you guys might be able to do that. That hopefully that'll be that would be cool. I want to ask about the current state of Chosen Stranger. Now, you've told us a little bit. You guys are prepping to do a live show, right? Yeah. And, Jeff, are you going to be singing the vocals live while you're playing uh, the I'm drums? Or... Actually, Rusty sings some of it, too, because if I try to do the whole thing, my throat will probably go out. But he, we share the lead vocals, and then other times I'll sing harmonies to his lead vocals. We just have to patch it together whatever we can because the songs are strong enough where as long as they're done well the songs kind of hold up you know, you know what, what we're doing is uh we're we're both singing lead vocals kind of like half and half so when i sing the lead vocal he does the harmony and then when he sings it i do it and uh you know it helps us uh with uh you know some of those songs are kind of hard to sing even a step down because they were pretty high so, you know, it gives us a breather, uh, like So Glad, for instance. Yeah. I mean, we switch uh, the, the vocal line and we do, I'll sing a line and he'll sing a line back and forth to give each other a breather. And yeah. you don't even know who's doing what. I mean, yeah. because cool. uh, I'll be doing a harmony for him here. He'll be, and then to switch over, he's doing the lead vocal. And we got so used to doing it now that it, it fit together like a puzzle, but we got the job done and, uh, and we're able to sing it. Are you guys re going to be recording this material for an album? We're going to record some new material, but um, since a lot of people don't know uh, these songs, I mean, I, I, I would hate for them just to be lost. And if we were going to go, if we like to put a, an album out, say here's a here's the brand new album from Joseph Stranger and actually a full one like that, I, who, I wouldn't mind doing them redoing some of those songs like as if they were just fresh you know rest written right now we're going to go in and do two new ones and send them down to to bill over uh ceo down there at rocks and he said he'll 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 get it out there for us if, once we get it to him he'll remaster it package it because i just want people to know i don't want him to get the cd and go these guys must have been cool back in the day oh no we're, <laughs> we're alive right getting ready to go back to work so it's just sure. like a reminder 45 or something here we're we're, we're current we're still here yeah, yeah you know the yeah. thing is, is the, oh, yeah. those songs were written a long time ago but it's almost like they're timeless yeah today i think people will enjoy them today and the people who never heard us before like that are going to hear that record they i mean unless they look at it and see when it was recorded as far as they know it was just written yesterday you know Where yeah. can our friends and fans of the band, where can they, what are some outlets online where they can discover you guys or reconnect with you guys online? Here's what, what we're going to do. Um, we we hadn't actually gotten to that point yet because we didn't even know if we was even going to be a band or ever, ever even play again. You know, both of us told uh, told God pretty much when we were praying, it's like, you know, we hadn't played in years until, like I said, until Rock's Records kind of triggered everything to get going again and get back together. So we're just kind of leaving it up uh, up to him. Uh, and um, But since this did get going like it did, we're, we're going to be putting a Chosen Stranger page on Facebook and YouTube. Rex, for, for Russ and Jeff, do you have any, any questions before we head on to Scripture Closeout? 
Um, no, it's just been really awesome to connect with, you know, a band that you just kind of wondered, hey, I love that song on that compilation. And you just wonder, like, what happened? And so it's yeah. always good. I, I love these kind of interviews where we kind of get like the inside scoop of like how things went and what happened. And it's so wonderful to see that you guys are still you know doing this for the lord and that we're going to see some new music so thank you so much for just continuing on guys um thank and you that... yeah <laughs> thank you i mean we're we're really we really appreciate it and we're really honored that you guys like our music you know and appreciate the recordings that we did a long time ago as far as we knew they may not they ever even got heard again and it was just something that we did in the past but you know we never wanted it to end that way and uh, we really didn't know what God was going to do with us, but we had been praying about it for years. And, you know, God works in mysterious ways, and his timing is means everything. And considering everything that's going on right now in the world, which you see how crazy it's gotten, we are needed with, with what we used to do more than ever now. Mm -hmm. And we're the type of band that will go out there and speak the truth boldly, no matter what anybody says or how much they hate us. We're going to tell them what the truth is about Jesus. Yeah, normally, if unless we're opening for a major artist, if it's our own show, we're going to do 90 minutes, and then I come out, and, and whatever God puts on my I never know what I'm going to say, because I don't know who's there, only the Holy Spirit does. I'm just willing to open my mouth, and every time we see fruit. So if it's our show, we're going to do a set, I'm going to speak a bit, and we'll be available after that, but that's how we do a show. Jeff and Rusty, thank you so much for blessing us, and Rex is going to read a message from home, but please don't hang up just yet. We'll uh, stick around for one more one more moment when he finishes. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Well, guys, I was thinking about the band name Chosen Stranger, and this verse of scripture kind of came to my mind, and it's from um, the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 18 and 19, and it reads, Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. Um, so, and I know, Russ, you told me where the scripture in the New Testament that you <clears throat> got the band name from, but I just thought that too kind of was, uh, kind of went along with the band's name. And I also want to just dovetail on something Kent said earlier. Um, the world looks on things on the outside, be it your clothing or whatever, but God looks at what's in your heart and yeah. just remember that it doesn't matter what people think about you. It's, it's God looks at the inside, not the outside. So I just want people to remember that, that, you know, God really sees you, the true you. You know, well, I mean, we've changed too. I mean, as you, you saw, I, I don't know the, if you uh, see the, the, uh, the death Walker album cover. I mean, we, we had big, hair and you know and the things were a lot different there as you can see you know we, we got short hair now and you know we're not really into trying to you know uh keep up with what's going on we're i'm gonna go out there with probably a t-shirt on and some jeans and just rock you know, <laughs> i'm not into trying to look like a rock star and all yeah. that you know we've mm -hmm. grown a lot of spirits oh mm -hmm. yeah now, hair was cooler i might give it an attempt <laughs> <laughs> none of us would look the same in spandex anymore would we guys <laughs> hey it's been a pleasure jeff and russ i am so happy for you guys i've about said so glad but again no pun intended um friends pick this wonderful album up it was released in 2023 on rocks records i promise you you won't be disappointed great classic metal right here so with that said uh jeff and russ we're going to say goodbye to our viewers but stick around for one more moment. Take care, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye. I love you guys. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Very cool. Guys, I'd I want to talk. I'd love Go to ahead. meet him someday. I was just going to say, I'd love to meet Michael Sweet someday. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, I I want... Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> no, you, you, you know how it is when you're on the phone or text or anything. Two people try to talk. You, no, go ahead. You, you're the interview guy. 
<laughs> oh, you're our, you're our guest, Russ. Say whatever you'd like to say. Go ahead. 